So we just had a big ban list in Yu-Gi-Oh! And let's talk about the new best decks after said ban list. If you enjoy content like this, please subscribe. Because at the current rate, it will take about four and a half years to reach 100,000. So keep that going. And maybe, maybe I can get there before I turn 72. Branded, I think, got better. Because the ban list did get rid of the Baron and Borloid Savage Omni Negates. Which is what Branded was most most afraid of. Branded in general cannot play the required hand traps to stop the board from happening and so it plays board breakers. But if your opponent can freely just combo off and now you have to resolve like a branded fusion or a triple tactics talents while they have savage and baron you're gonna have a bad time. So branded was like already solid but now it got a little more solid. So I'm going to put it right here for now. But depending on where we put stuff, I might put it a bit higher. Next, we have Chimera. Chimera is just worse. Like, sorry. This deck can play hand traps and it makes it like pretty solid, I guess. But the board is fair. Uh, it's it's just, I don't know, lower ceiling branded, really. Now we have Dragon Link. Uh, I don't want to say ass for Dragon Link, but I'll say a sad smiley because they lost Borolode Savage and that is pretty sad. <laughs> now we have Flu. So Flu got helped, actually, because just like Branded, Flu cannot really afford to play that many hand traps. It does play Shifter, obviously, but whenever you don't draw Shifter and you have to actually play the game with Flu, I know, a really tough concept, then suddenly you have to let them combo off. And if they have like Borolode Savage and Baron and Apo, then Flu has a bad time. There are some people who claim they can break the board in engine. I have not seen it happen yet. But so overall, while it was already solid before, I think it's more solid now. Now, next we have Kashtira. I actually thought that before the ban list, Kashtira was an okay contender in the meta. It can play a bunch of hand traps. Most two card combos are OTK. It can play Shifter, which is, you know, a bullshit auto win sometimes. However, the ban list has taken away one of Kash's best cards. Baron. Yeah, I know this sounds silly, but basically because Kash can play like six, maybe nine, even level three tuner hand traps, it was actually very happily making Baron in almost every hand. And so now that you take that away, the end board can only be like Unicorn Fenrir or the Heat Soul line. And the Heat Soul line is cute if it wasn't for the fact that everyone is on a billion hand traps, so that shit is never resolving. So now that Baron is gone, I don't know. Kash is getting a little bit worse and already wasn't the greatest. So I'll put it in B, but it's definitely going to be like the bottom of B. Uh, before, I was actually very convinced of something like this, and now I think it's more something like this. Losing Baron does hurt. Next, we have Lab. Uh, I guess Lab is, like, happy that the Omnis are gone, because that was your biggest concern. But then again, people started playing back row hate because Runic stun is, like, annoying as shit, and it also didn't get hit. So maybe it's bottom of B. I think it's worse than Kash hot take. Then we have this. What the fuck? Is this the, the weird new flower thing? I I have no opinion on this. I'm I'm sorry. I'll I'll put it somewhere here. I don't know. Now next we have Rika. Now I watched Jess doing her tier list and talking about the ban list changes, and she said the meta is like this. Now I really want to believe that, but I don't. But I really want to. But I don't. This basically depends on if we go to like a breaker format, but I just don't, I don't see it. I'm gonna do this. All right, next Centurion. So Centurion is getting some really solid new cards from what I've seen, but can it like compete with 17 hand trap shenanigans from Snake Eye? I don't think so. But I think it's better than Rika, but worse than Cash. Because can it OTK well now? No, it can just like set it up its own calamity lock, right? I don't know. Somewhere here feels about right. Then we have Rescue Ace. So Rescue Ace actually, when I first saw the ban list, I thought, oh, this deck got way better because it doesn't care about the Borload and Baron hits, but it can still play all the Broken Fire cards. But it turns out, once I started actually thinking about it more, this deck was actually hit really hard. I know it sounds ridiculous, but basically of all the fire decks, this deck is hurt most by Link Karibo. <laughs> now, why the fuck is this deck hurt most by Link Karibo? One of the important combos in this deck was if you opened only Hydrant, meaning you have Hydrant and just a bunch of hand traps then you could hydrant one card combo into heat soul plus follow-up so you had like in your opponent's turn seven cards in hand and rescue ace follow-up with a 
Heat Soul and they were not killing you because four of those cards at least had to be hand traps, right? And the next turn you could come back. That entire line is dead without Link Rebo. So Hydrant is no longer a one card combo. So your deck actually got brickier. And this deck already runs a bunch of bricks, right? So like your, your one card Hydrant, gone. And more importantly as well, the Bonfire Poplar combo is a one card combo. But when you open Poplar alone, Poplar was also that Heat Soul combo. So if you play the deck at higher card counts, you are fine with bricking on Poplar or Hydrant because they were one card Heat Souls plus follow up. But that's no longer the case. So now you cannot run those cards at high copies. And so the deck overall just got a bunch brickier. Beyond that, of course, you also had a bunch of lines that also just randomly went into Heat Soul. Those are also dead ish. You could still do them, but it would kind of suck. So you don't want to. So Rescue Ace actually got worse. Um, that said, it, pff, I, I don't know. I'm going to put you right here. Next, pure snake eye, because we do have fire king snake eye over here. So this is pure snake eye. I'm going to go out on a limb and give you the hot take. It's still the best deck, baby. Let's go. Everyone coping on fire king, you're wrong. <laughs> So basically, obviously, it doesn't seem correct, right? When you see the ban list, you're like, okay, Pure's board got weaker and Fire King can still make the exact same board. So why would you make Pure? The reason is Pure was better not because of Borload, Savage and Baron alone. Pure could play way more hand traps, which meant in the mirror of Pure versus Fire King, Pure was winning going second more often because you had Imperms and Veilers and so forth more often. Whereas Fire King couldn't run as many because all of those Fire King cards are bricks except for Kirin. That is still the case. And if everyone's doing these hand trap wars, Pure is still gonna win. Now, that alone is still not enough to pull it over the edge. I think what actually pushes it over the edge is that there is no fucking way that all these free bodies Pure has access to doesn't still just make bigger boards. You're not telling me that there's no good Synchro or Link monsters in the game left for this deck to abuse. Really? You think Borload, Savage and Baron being gone is enough? Come on. If you've played enough Manadium and Super Heavy Samurai, nah, fuck nah. So people will adapt, people will overcome, and at the end of the day, if you start hand trap warring this deck is still just gonna win every fucking time it's still gonna win more than fire king and if you get hand trapped once or twice you weren't ending on borrowed savage baron lines anyway so then the deck didn't really change of course in your grind with link rebo blah, blah blah but that's the same for fire king and fire king even lost its heat soul lines which it actually used way more than pure so okay we can talk about it i do think fire king snake i obviously likes this new list because pure not having access to the two omnis obviously Obviously, you're not happy about it, but I don't think that makes Fire King better. I also think that's too obvious. Don't forget that if everyone is star starting to target this deck's existence, Droll gets way better. And this deck, when it has to do like these dog shit ass lines that instantly go Ponyx into Island just to dodge Droll, it's just way, way weaker. So I think Pure is still better. It's still just as an engine, still way higher quality. And so, yeah. I know this is a hot take. Every Everyone who makes a tier list is going to do it like this. I think that's wrong. I think once the format gets solved, it's like this. Next up, we have tier laments. This deck is dog shit. I know a bunch of... No, okay, I mean, I'm being a bit rude there to my favorite deck. But basically, everyone is cooking now with this deck. Everyone's like, wow, we have three malicious. Whoa, we can make colossus. Oh, we can do this. And here's the thing. Tier, when going first, uninterrupted, was always FTKing. Yeah, tier is like a box of Legos. Tyr could already build anything. In theory, Tyr could build every board. You can right now tell me, oh, but what about the three god cards and blue eyes shining dragon and dark magician girl? Could Tyr make that board? Yes, Tyr could make that board. Tyr could make any board. The issue with Tyr is that if it had to go second into a fully established fire board backed up by non-engine and sometimes even bullshit floodgates that it could randomly draw into, Tyr would lose every time unless you were playing against a potato. The reason Tyr would lose every time unless your opponent was a potato is because you could you, you would have to draw very specific outs just to get rid of Apo before you could even start playing and then you get drawled and then the game is over. So Tyr going first was already best deck. You know, if I win 12 die rolls in a row and I don't like hard brick on all the dog shit Tyr needs to play, then Tyr is the best deck in the universe. But that is not real Yu-Gi-Oh. You're gonna have to go second plenty of games. And this deck in 
into fire decks, you're just sitting there. You don't have the room for the 17 hand traps that you should be playing. So you just sit there, la di da di da. I love my tier cards. I hope I get to play in 15 minutes. They make their whole board and then you have to start and they're sitting there with five cards in hand and all the follow up and a billion hand traps you get drilled. It's fucking over. This deck is ass as long as the format requires you to have 15 hand traps and this deck cannot afford to play them. So yes, we can make Colossus. Yes, we can do Protoss. Yes, we can use Malicious to do the craziest shit ever, but it doesn't matter because we could already FTK. We could already Mayakashi trap into bullshit sidelock and all of this stuff. It doesn't matter. We won going first. We just don't win going second. And the new cards don't change that. So C tier for you, baby. Next, we have Tenpai. So Tenpai... <sighs> I think in the world of bullshit hand traps, Tenpai is king. However, I think the only reason it would be in A is because people don't know that they should be respecting it. I think the moment that these decks start signing D barrier and also start maining their Liralusk card or Fuko Coco to turn the level twos into basically nice battle phase bozo go next, Tenpai kind of falls apart. So at first, Tenpai will probably do well. Then everyone realizes, oh fuck. I need to play the Liralus card or oh, I need to play the Fugo Coco card. And then Tenpai just becomes fucking dog shit. And at that point, I mean, not dog shit, but you know, at that point, it should probably be somewhere like here. But for now, it's probably here. You know, people won't read and people won't think. Now we have Unchained. Unchained has a similar issue as Tierlements, where it cannot play the hand traps. It should, you know, you know, it can play nine or 12 if you're really stretching, but then you're playing over 40. And then it's also a lot of two card combos just like tier. However, it does do that more consistently so I will put it higher. The reason that I put it under this still is that at least this deck has like one card combos and it also can play a bunch of hand traps which these cannot. The reason this flower thing is here is because no clue. <laughs> then we have Voiceless. I think Voiceless is the finest deck of all time. I don't know like people lose to this because they don't know the cards including me. I am not very good at playing Voiceless or anything like that but whenever I face it I, I just feel like wow your end board is so fucking fair. Maybe the future support changes that but compared to fire, brrr, I don't think it's that crazy. Then Ubel. Uh, Ubel goes right here. Right here. Until it gets Phantom. Once it gets Phantom, we are fucking off to the races. I fucking love this deck. I have it right there. Okay, I know I know. people in the comments will be saying, Oh, you, you put Ubel that low. They already got regional tops. Yeah, well, the only way this fucking deck gets regional tops is when you're opening Shifter and Skill Drain and Super Poly like man. And you sack the living shit out of people. And you're like, oh, wow, look, Ubel won't. Ubel didn't win. Your sacky fucking non-engine won. But that said, I love Ubel. I, I literally have the cards maxed out right now. I am so ready. I, I want to make the most beautiful fiend pile. But we need, absolutely need, Phantom of Ubel. Even with just Legacy of Destruction, like Throne, really good card. Grave Squirmer, really good card. But it's not enough because the deck doesn't do anything <laughs> until we get Phantom as well. So without the fusion, we put it right here. Maybe if the fusion doesn't come in time but we have access to Fiendsmith, we can at least, you know, come combo while not instantly dying to Nibiru. I know some people say, oh, but you can already combo under Nibiru, you know, you just pass on your bell. Whoa, pass on one card. And then they go SP Little Knight, get rid of your continuous spell, break the rest of the board for free, and now they win. Wow, nice fucking idea. And then they go, oh, but that's where I flip skill drain. Okay, cool. But it's not a real solution, right? So you bell, yeah, I'm I'm very passionate about this deck. I love this deck, just like Tear. It's just that you bell will one day get the cards to put it here, and Tear probably will not. <laughs> <laughs> then we have Pearly. Pearly got help. And Pearly can already play a bunch of hand traps. I think Pearly got a whole lot better. That being said, if people still play a billion hand traps... Pearly needs to start playing like discard engines. I think I put it here. I think it's not as... Actually, nah, I put it here. Yeah, Pearly right here. Solid, solid, solid. Then Manadium. Losing Baron really hurts. Yeah. Then Runic Stun. Runic Stun didn't get hit and lost the Omni Negates. I'm gonna put it right here. And then Salamangrate. I don't know why it's in here, but it can still play fire cards, so sure. So this is it. This is the tier list, in my opinion. Pure ever so slightly better than Fire King still, which I know is crazy. You know, people people will do this. And at first, because Rally is about to happen, people don't have time to solve stuff. It might even look like this. But I think this is the reality. Everything else seems fine to me, except for this flower thing. I'm not really sure. Uh... <laughs> Hope you found it interesting. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you soon. Ciao.